Hi, I'm Jungyo Kim from KAIST. In this talk, I'll introduce LineFS, a distributed file system offloaded to a SmartNIC using pipeline parallelism for efficiency. This talk is done in collaboration with several institutes around the world. A traditional distributed file systems, or DFSs, adopt a client server model to avoid interference between application and I.O. operations performed by DFS services. Since commercial persistent memory was released in 2018, DFSs have used persistent memory as a storage device. However, DFSs cannot utilize the performance of persistent memory efficiently because there is a network crossing overhead in the client server model. For example, the write latency of a persistent memory is 94 nanoseconds, but applications have to wait for more than 3 to 5 microseconds for their data to be persisted because of the network crossing overhead. To fully leverage the performance of persistent memory, state-of-the-art DFSs adopted a client local persistent memory model. In this model, clients and DFS services run on the same machine, and DFS services use persistent memory as their storage device. There is no network run trim overhead because class data is written to the local persistent memory directly. Asis and Orion adopt this client local persistent memory model and achieve an order of magnitude performance improvement from the client server model DFSs. As storage devices and networks become faster, DFSs consume increasing CPU and memory resources. In cloud and HPC environments in particular, DFSs are likely to run with other CPU and memory intensive applications. This leads to interference between the DFS and co-running applications. The problem becomes more severe as DFSs adopt a client local persistent memory model because client local persistence requires further DFS services to run on the client. The graph shows aggregated throughput and client CPU usage of Ceph and Asis. We run 8 storage micro-benchmarks on the same machine that perform sequential writes with 4 kilobyte write size. We see that both DFSs consume a large amount of client CPU resources. Ceph uses more than 2 CPU cores to provide modest DFS throughput. SS achieves higher throughput due to its client local persistent memory. However, it consumes more than 5 cores, 2.4x more than Ceph to support asynchronous application processes. The resulting resource interference lowers the performance of the DFS and co-running applications at the same time. For example, we measure up to 72% slowdown of the CPU-intensive stream cluster application when it runs alongside a storage-intensive benchmark that uses ASIS. A solution is to offload the DFS to SmartNICs to relieve the resource contention in the host machine. By running the DFS using the additional resources of the SmartNIC, we can save host resources and eliminate the interference between the DFS and co-running applications. However, there are two challenges in offloading the DFS to a SmartNIC. The first challenge is the high access latency from the SmartNIC to host's percent memory across PCIe. It takes 94 nanoseconds from the host CPU but it takes 3 microseconds from SmartNIC CPU. The second challenge is the WIMPy architecture of the SmartNIC. Cores in the SmartNIC operate at 800 MHz, that is around 3 times slower than the host CPUs. Both challenges significantly slow down DFS performance when offloaded to a SmartNIC. To overcome these challenges, we present LineFS. LineFS follows two design principles to achieve its goal. First, LineFS distinguishes latency critical from deferral tasks and offloads only deferral tasks to the SmartNIC. We call this persistent publish. Persistent publish ensures that latency critical persistence tasks finish on time while relieving the host from deferral tasks that are indifferent to the high latency interconnect. Second, with pipeline parallelism, LineFS aggressively parallelizes the offloaded tasks and achieves comparable or even better performance than the host DFS, even though the offloaded tasks are executed on the WIMPy SmartThink resources. In this talk, I'm going to explain two parallel offload pipelines, the publishing pipeline and the replication pipeline. To explain persist and publish, let me first introduce the three components of LineFS. First, 
LibFS is a library file system that provides a per-process DFS interface to applications and executes latency-critical persistence operations. Second, NIGFS executes on the smart NIC. It executes deferable DFS operations. Finally, a lightweight host kernel worker helps NIGFS with host local data copy operations. Now to persist and publish. Persist is an operation that makes data durable to a private local area. LibFS does it by writing data to persistent memory using the host CPU because it is a latency critical task. Publish is an operation that moves data from the private local area to a public area. It is performed by NICFS because this operation can be deferred. This approach is akin to that of host-based file systems optimized for persistent memory, such as Strata and Assis, but we extended it to smart NIC offload. Next, we are going to see how pipeline parallelism dramatically increases the throughput of the NICFS publishing process. The words in the orange rounded box indicate the steps of the publication operation. First, after libfs has written data to its private log, NICFS can fetch the data from the host. Next, NICFS must validate the fetched data as it comes from untrusted processes. If the data is valid, NICFS can publish it by requesting a data copy from the kernel worker. The kernel worker may offload the required main copy to a host local DMing engine to minimize host CPU usage. After the main copy is completed, NICFS sends an act to libfs. You can see how the publishing stages are executed sequentially without pipeline parallelism, which takes a long time on the smart NIC. LineFS divides log data into small chunks and fetches them asynchronously as soon as they become available. This allows chunk processing to overlap in a processing pipeline, which makes publishing parallel. Pipeline parallelism dramatically improves the throughput of the publication operation. The second pipeline is the replication pipeline. LineFS leverages chain replication via DMA like in Assis. In DFS context, AppSync guarantees the persistence of data on all replicas. When AppSync is called by an application, DFS replicates data synchronously. The application has to wait for the replication to be completed. LineFS replicates data in the background in advance of AppSync call. It replicates data in chunk size, and the replication is pipelined. If large data writes precede an F-Sync call, the replication pipeline efficiently reduces F-Sync latency because most of the log data has already been persisted. The background replication does not require host resources because it is performed by NICFS. There are five stages in the replication pipeline. The first two stages, fetching and validating, are shared with the publishing pipeline. After validation, data is transferred via RDMA to Replica1's smart NIC local DRAM. Replica1's NICFS now transfers this data to host local personal memory and in parallel to the personal memory of Replica2. The parallel transfer enables LineFS to hide network latency. Finally, each Replica's NICFS sends an act to the primary NICFS when their data transfer is completed. There are a few more interesting design ideas. First, LineFS leverages SmartNIC's data path processing capability. NICFS can process replicated data with spare smart resources to reduce network bandwidth consumption. Second, it increases the availability of DFS services, leveraging that SmartNIC can access host person memory even if the host OS is crashed. LineFS provides strong file system consistency properties, such as linearizability and prefix crash consistency by processing data in client log order. Finally, LineFS manages shared files with list mechanism that provides single writer multiple reader access to files and directories. In this talk, I'll introduce the first two ideas. Please refer to our paper for the other design ideas. Network bandwidth is an important resource for DFS scalability. To save network bandwidth, 
LineFS exploits spare smartening CPU resources to compress log data. In the replication pipeline, primary smartening compresses log data before transferring it to the next replica. It reduces the network bandwidth consumed by replication. Replica smartening decompresses the data in the background. LineFS compresses data opportunistically to avoid DFS performance degradation. In other words, it does not compress data if smartening CPU is busy or if replication is triggered by F-Sync. The next idea is extended availability. Even if HostOS is crashed, SmartNIC can operate independently. LineFS leverages this separate value domain to make DFS services available when HostOS is crashed. In the normal situation, log data is copied to a public area by a host kernel worker. The host kernel worker sends a heartbeat signal periodically to NICFS. The kernel worker can send heartbeat signals frequently and make NICFS detect its failure instantly because heartbeat signals are delivered via PCIe without consuming network bandwidth. When Replica's kernel worker is crashed, NICFS detects host OS failure. As soon as it detects its host is failed, it publishes log data to the public area via PCIe copy that uses RDMA interface. NICFS first gets log data by RDMA read to its DRAM and copies it back to the host public area with RDMA write. Therefore, LineFS can provide DFS services, especially publication in this scenario, to its application when Replica's host is crashed. Now on to our evaluation. In our experiment setup, we use three Xeon Gold host machines equipped with 96GB DRAM and six 128GB persistent memory DIMMs. For the SmartNIC, we used NVIDIA Bluefield DPU with 16 ARM A17 cores, 16GB DRAM, and 25GB Ethernet with RDMA. We used Stream Cluster of Persex 3.0 as a co-running CPU intensive job for our experiments. First, we ask whether LineFS can provide adequate DFS performance even when offloading to a WIMPy SmartNIC. We evaluate this question with a microbenchmark and two application benchmarks. Second, we ask how much interference to core running applications might be alleviated by SmartNIC offload. We evaluate this question by evaluating the performance of a core running stream cluster instance. Last, we ask how effectively LineFS leverages SmartNIC resources for data compression and extended availability. We evaluate the data compression with Tencent's root and the extended availability making replica host crash while Valbench runs. Our throughput microbenchmark performs sequential writes. The file is three-way replicated. We compare four configurations, ACIS, ACIS with background replication enabled, LineFS without hyperparallelization, and LineFS with full feature enabled. The figure shows throughput over different number of DFS clients. We evaluate two scenarios, when replicas are idle and when replicas are busy due to a co-running application stream cluster. The purple line at the top shows the maximum attainable throughput with our network hardware. The first thing we see is that LineFS throughput is always better than ACIS even with the background replication. When replica CPUs are idle, background replication improves throughput. ACIS with background replication and LineFS, which also replicates in the background, have similar throughput. The throughput of LineFS is slightly better than ACIS with background replication because LineFS exploits pipeline parallelism. Without pipeline parallelism, LineFS's throughput drops by up to 60%, demonstrating that pipeline parallelism is key to efficiency on the smart need. When replicas are busy, with one RevPass process, throughput does not drop because host resource contention is low. However, as the number of RevPass processes increases, the throughput drops because of host resource contention. LineFS's throughput is 33% higher than ACIS with and without background replication with 8 processes due to smartening of load. LineFS's throughput also suffers from host resource contention versus the idle case because its kernel worker uses the host CPU. Next, we look at application benchmarks. We evaluate LevelDB and FileBench to compare LineFS with ACIS when replicas are busy. For LevelDB write latency, 
LenFS shows up to 80% better latency than Assist. LenFS and Assist read latencies are similar, as their read passes are the same. File server and environment workloads are used in the file venture. LenFS achieves 79% better throughput with the file server workload. LenFS is able to fully exploit pipeline parallelism in this case, because file server does not call fsync. However, LenFS shows 21% lower throughput than assets with the Vermeil workload. There are three reasons. First, Vermeil does fewer writes than file server, which means there are fewer chances to leverage pipeline parallelism. Second, Vermeil calls fsync frequently after each small file creation and update, which also prevents LenFS from leveraging pipeline parallelism. Lastly, file opens make up 9% of all DFS calls in the Vermeil workload. File open incurs expensive synchronous PCI overhead for LineFS to execute permission checks. We evaluate stream cluster execution time running two storage micro benchmarks simultaneously to generate sufficient contention on the host machine. Here, we ran stream cluster on all the nodes including the primary. Bars in the figure represent stream cluster execution time, and the line indicates the throughput of our storage micro benchmark. SS increases stream cluster runtime by up to 72% versus a solo run. 18% better throughput of SS with background replication makes its microbenchmarks terminate earlier, but it degrades stream cluster similarly because it uses more host resources. LanFS slows down stream cluster the least with the best storage throughput by making use of smartening resources for DFS operations. We evaluate the effectiveness of data compression running a distributed batch processing benchmark. For the benchmark, we use Tencent Sort. Its intermediate data is replicated and causes high network bandwidth utilization. We evaluate network bandwidth consumption and benchmark performance according to different compression ratios. LenFS compresses data on primary smart NIC and replicates it. We use LZ4 compression algorithm and adjust compression ratios with an input set generator. LenFS reduces network bandwidth consumption effectively. As compression ratio increases, LenFS is able to save more network bandwidth. Due to the short data transfer time with 80% compression ratio, LenFS achieves 10% better performance than SS while saving 72% of network bandwidth. Finally, we demonstrate the extended availability of LineFS with FileBench Fermi workload. We measure per second throughput of FileBench. During the execution, we make Replica 1's host OS crash and restore it after 8 seconds. Before Replica 1's host is crashed, LineFS copies data from local area to public area via DMA copy by host kernel worker. As Replica 1's host is crashed, NigFS in the same node detects it and itself starts to copy data across PCIe. After HostOS and kernel worker are restored, NigFS uses DMA copy by kernel worker again to support better throughput. During the host failure, FileBench throughput does not drop because PCIe copy throughput is sufficient to run this benchmark. To conclude, the increasing CPU and memory usage of distributed file systems causes increasing host resource contention, degrading the performance of co-running applications and DFS clients alike. To mitigate the host resource contention, LineFS offloads DFS operations to SmartNICs, but LineFS SmartNIC offload has a high overhead due to the high latency PCI interconnect to host-based percent memory and WIMPy SmartNIC hardware architecture. Two design principles of LineFS, publish and persist, and pipeline parallelism overcome these challenges. LenFS achieves up to 80% lower latency for level DB operations and 79% better file bench throughput compared to assist under host resource scarcity. You can find LenFS's source code via the link at the bottom of this slide. Thank you for listening to our talk.